All right, God bless you guys for joining me here at HNLC Studios as always. And actually, power of the prayer that takes place here every morning. Most of you don't catch us on our actually um, popping station as we come into our actually speaker stations this time because we're running a lot of different Eastern Europe countries and trying to develop a lot of uh, our actually um, services out there in those particular areas. And we have great teams out there in the Eastern Europe area. But this morning, we're with you guys and we're going to be over in the book of Psalm, well, Proverbs. We're going to be in the book of Proverbs, chapter 5. Dealing with instructions and not falling into rebellion that can cause you to lead to death. And sometimes these situations take place in our life. It's really a tempting thing. And most of us all have temptations in our life that, you know, the Word of God decrees and declares there's nothing that He couldn't overcome uh, in your life that you deal with. So we want to make sure, you know, as we go out to the day this morning, it's a great word that comes from the kingdom of God. It's a very uh, vital word. To the heart of the individual, not just speak about an individual person in general. This can both this uh, particular uh, uh, teaching this morning can go both ways, and this prayer is going all over. So we want to look at this very closely. Father God, we thank you, we bless you as always, as we come before your throne, Lord, not lacking or taking anything for granted. As you bring things to the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, Lord, we live in a time where things are so laxadacious to the point that people really not believe it, to the point that they don't really understand how important their life is in the terms of following you with the very things that's going on around the land and in the countries. Father God, we ask you to continue to get them attentive ear to hear. You know what the Holy Spirit is constantly speaking through the mouth of the priests and the prophets in these days, that they as being men and women of God will know also that the plan in them is designed to go forth. And I believe that's nothing you will hold from them, Father God, when they continue to walk upright and seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of your righteousness, Father God. Help us, Father God, as we go forth in this word this morning. Bless the mouth of this priest as he speaks the word to your people, that they may get a good understanding and good alignment of this word on this morning, that they may continue to apply it to their daily instructions or the um, instructions today, you know, not just today, but every day. Father God, we bless you, we thank you, we honor you for this time, this moment. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Lord. Amen. Now, when the Word of God talks in the book of Proverbs, chapter 5, he's not just talking about the process of dealing with uh, uh, women and women and men. It's both sides he's looking at, too, because this particular area falls into uh, categories where he's dealing right now, dealing with the area of the woman side of this particular teaching, but also men can take it as being um, some teachings also. And the Word of God decrees, and it declares, with my son, pay attention to my wisdom. Now, I really don't understand that part. The Bible says, if any man likes wisdom, let him ask of God. That there's something you don't quite understand. You don't try to follow up, don't try to run up behind a philosopher, somebody who thinks they know a little bit of education or understanding. What you got to do is you got to use the Word of God according to Matthew 6 and 6. As it said, go into your secret place, pray to God. Most of us have visions and dreams about things that's going on in our life. The first thing we run to is somebody to tell them what the dream could be interpreted. Well, God has given you the ability to go into the closet yourself. This is why you go into your secret place. This is why in your prayer time, you make sure you visit God and tell him about all the things that's happening in your life and that's going on. And what do you want him to correct and fix? And what kind of wisdom? that you want to give to you concerning those particular situations that you go through. So he says, once again, my son, pay attention to my wisdom. He didn't say man's wisdom. He said, lend your ear to my understanding. Really listen to what he's saying right here because he's asking you to point, look, anything you're dealing with, you don't understand, you don't know, look, take it to the Lord in prayer. You know, my mother used to tell me all the time, son, you got to do everything in prayer. Don't do anything on the mouth or based on a different person. You take it to God in prayer. If instruction comes to you from a man in a position as being an authority or in an overseer, you still have to take it to God in prayer because you got to look at that. You don't take anybody's word for granted. If a word of prophecy comes to you, a word of prophetic comes to you, you got to take it to the God in prayer because you really, get that, you really have to filter that word out and get understanding of what it means to you and what it's going to be interpreted in you. Don't let people just run up to you and prophesy a word in your life and then you just run headstrong into a wall and then you fall out and break your neck, you know, and so it's word not physically, but in that way you find yourself in a hole, you know. So the word of God say, look here, once again, my son, pay attention to my wisdom, lend your ear to my instructions. The word of God talks about it in Romans 4 and 17, he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord has to say. It's to Romans 10 and 17. 
talks about that. He who has an ear, let him hear, you know, uh, what the Spirit of the Lord has to say uh, to the church. You know, when we look at this particular area, and I want to make sure we get a good, um, you're going to have pages turning. It's not unprofessional things. It's, you know, you're in the Word. You, know, you really want to know what the Word is, and so you're going to turn pages. It's not no imperfection in anything that you do when you bring forth the Word of God. You're trying to bring understand it to the people. Let them see what God is speaking to you in this particular scriptures. Well, what God speaks over here, I want to look at something over here and um, how we're looking at this. And this is what, in terms of how this goes forth. It says on the book of Romans, let's get Romans 10 and 17 for a moment here. And let's get some really good solidification out of this particular area where he's seen, right? Really in position to help us move forward with valid instructions and information in terms of what the Word of God is telling us. Now, the breakdown of this particular area of Scripture, I want to look at this a little closely here. Because I like to kind of bring things closely to you and let you really understand what's going on. You know, Lord, we come against every negative form and fashion of every spirit and every tongue to try to come against the word on this morning. We just loose it in the name of Jesus. We just declare a decree that even this mouth of the priest begin to speak. Father God, I wish you to douse the mouth of any outside force, any kind of hindrance in any shape, form, or fashion in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I had to say that because I get a lot of interruption on my calls. And that sometimes just people just don't have any kind of respect for what you do because they feel like they need more attention. But I know they hear a lot of things that we do here, and they just go ahead and violently interrupt anyway. So that's really not polite to do that. Your mother always told me, you know, if you want to ask a question about something, you know, you say, excuse me. And that question can be answered. In the book of Romans 10 and 17, it says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing come by the word of God. And when you talk about faith coming by hearing, hearing come by the word of God, the idea is that we as men and women of God have got to really hear to explain uh, words that's been told to us that we really get in our spirit to really get a good understanding about what it is that God is saying. Physical validation doesn't bring any kind of attention to the kingdom of God, but the heart and what a man and woman receives from the kingdom of God and it touches their heart. And it brings transformation to the heart. You know, the word of God decrees that this is a this is a this is a circumcision made without hands, and it's the validation of the heart. We want to make sure the heart is going to receive proper instructions of wisdom that comes from the kingdom of God. As you go back over to the book of Proverbs, chapter five, Proverbs chapter five makes it very clear. Pay attention to wisdom, you know, lend an ear to understanding. And he says over here, as you go down here to verse two, he say that you may preserve directions. Now notice what he's saying. These things are giving you information about how you can sustain your life in the midst of a situation or circumstance. Now when you run into calamities, issues in your life on a daily basis, like we always do, what do we do? We keep our notepad with us. Now we got iPhones and cell phones, all we got to do is just what talking into the system, and it's be that kind of like a, a, a talkie, you know, and, and like a messenger. And we can keep that information later on tonight. We'll go to lay down to go to sleep. Guess what? We can bring that information up before God because we got so much information going around the world, and we really want to keep up with it. And we don't want to go to the point of, of, not, of losing it. We want to really bring it before God and ask Him what is it that He's telling us and what has took place today, and how can we avoid some of these distractions that takes place in our life. He says over here in the particular area, the second verse, he said that you may preserve direction. He said, and the lips make the word of God in terms of how we should look at this. And sometimes when you look at individuals who really don't care and understand about the direction of the word of God, you'll, still, you'll, you'll, you'll learn a lot about them and how they interrupt you and come towards you. And this is why I block off a lot of things in terms of uh, people who call, get a hold of me. They don't have any, any other uh, uh, information other than just trying to disrupt the kingdom in terms of what's going on. You know, the word of God says a way that seems right unto a man, but the end is his death. And so when you look at things like that, man and woman, God, you got to just back off of it and let God handle the situation. You just got to speak things according to Romans 4 and 17, to call things that be not what they were, because you can't fight the battle because the battle is not true. The Bible says you're more than a conqueror who's in Christ Jesus. When we look at this word right here in the book of Proverbs 5, and we look at this particular second verse, he said, your lips may preserve direction and the lips may keep knowledge. It says, for the lips of an immoral woman drops honey. Now, though, when he's telling you about the immoral woman that drops honey, the word of God speaks about that process also about the act of fidelity. A person who speaks and brings you into what we call conjugal uh, relationships or favorable, uh, unconditional, uh, well, uncommanded uh, uh, 
activities, as I put it like that. Because when you come together with a husband and wife, you know, you want to do things according to what Scripture tells you, and you want to act right because the marriage is a commandment. You just don't go out and just wildly throw yourself out there and try to find a way to find somebody, and you just dip through this person, dip through that person until you find you think what's right. Well, you really bring yourself into a place where you just cause a different spirit to enter in and out of you. If you don't have a good understanding about who you need to find and who God has for you, then you got to ask God about if there be a desire that you want in your life and God will give to you. Now, we understand the word of God in Psalms 84, 11. He said, no good thing we hold from those that if you walk upright. Now, he says in that scripture, he's a son and a shield, that when you come to Christ and pray to him uh, fervently, having a fervent prayer and being a righteous man and woman, and if you align yourself and you please God, then I don't think it's good. And I think God will hold from you according to his word. And we come back over here and he said, the mouth is smooth as honey. Now, let's get the third verse again. The lips of an immoral woman drops honey. Her mouth is smooth as oil, but the end is bitter as wormwood. It's something that seems right. Listen to me. Sometimes you look at a situation, you go try to find something you think is right in your own life. You hadn't consulted God about it. So what you do, you lean to your own understanding with the idea where you think it may be right. No matter how pleasing or may good it may be from a financial end, from an uh, intellectual end, for a financial end, you still gonna have to consult God. You know, when you look at things from a financial end, you look for somebody to put you up, hold you. Now, you want somebody to take care of you. You're not to that point. You want to take care of each other because that's what a covenant is all about. Men and women takes care of each other. That they may continue to have a stable household in terms of working with the kingdom of God and really God blessing them both as they go forth and doing the work that God has called them to do in that covenant. And how that covenant could produce uh, good apples, as I say, in terms of children. We're talking that nature. You want to produce spoil things, things that's going to cause you to fall into calamity. This is why you got to have a solid household. And even sometimes your kids do fall into mischief. You got to understand the word is ingrained in them. So when you pray, the word of God is in the position of going in and conquering that situation. Remember what the word of God always said, you're more than a conqueror who is in Christ Jesus. And I heard the woman of God, the little one on her station out there, the BTR station, the little one, she always told me all the time, she said, God is a, he said, we're more than the conquerors. We're more than the conquerors. You just think about a conqueror, his design and his plan is what his name is. He's designed to go into a situation and devastate it, no matter what it may be. It's kind of like the word of God talks about in the purpose of a, uh, Romans, no, I mean, uh, what is it, Isaiah 54 and 17, you know, no weapon formed against me. Well, you got to believe that because you got a God in your position, a God who knows and understands that you can call him in the midst of any situation, then guess what? The Bible says he's not a God that he should lie. What is it, Numbers 23, 19 to 21? Nor is he a son of any piece of a flesh that he had to repent. He's, a, he's in a commanding position. Commanding means he's in a position giving you authority, information, understanding, and direction, and whatever may be that's going on in your life. Now, he says right here again in this particular uh, third verse, For the lips of an immoral woman drops honey, the mouth of her is smooth as honey, but in the end is bitter as wormwood. Look here, shaped in the two-edged sword, her feet go down to death, her steps lay hold to hell. This is what he's telling you here. He's talking... You know, sometimes, you know, young men, young men, both of them, most young men and most of them, you go out and you look at the chest, you look at the biceps, you look at this, you look at all these things from the physical standpoint of view. He's got the BMW, he's got the car, he's got all those things, he's got the money briefcase, he's got all these names that look good to make it tracks you, the Chanel or whatever you call, you want to have the Gucci, the Louis Vuitton, you got all these things that make it look, but inside he can be rotting this warm wood or she can be rotting this warm wood. You know, some things can attract you to an individual based on the physical activity, but you never take time to look at the heart of an individual. That when you find yourself as being a person and a woman, a uh, man or woman in a position of seeking relationship, you got to contact God about this. It's not the physical attributes to bring a marriage to the quality of what it should be. It's God. The Bible said if you if you trust in him and lean not to your own and acknowledge him all your ways, the word of God says in Proverbs 10, uh, 22, there's nothing he would hold from you. So when your ways pleases God, he has nothing but the, bless, the best for you in your life. Now, you can go to some kind of philosopher who speaks words and sound good and make you say this and all that. But I'm telling you, if you really a person has patience, you really want to wait and you have a desire for what God wants you to have in your life, he will bring it to pass. The Bible said be anxious for nothing. You know what? You got to be. You got to be learn how to be patient, and that's one of the biggest things that people have never developed is patient. Because I want it right now. I want it quick as I can get it, and I want it to please everybody else. But you hadn't. Want, you don't want it to please God. 
You want to show forth for everybody else to be a trophy for somebody. Well, your husband, your wife is not a trophy. That's your wife. It's your husband. I ain't saying you got to have some kind of, you know, wildebeest or something like that in your life, whether it be a man or a woman. But, you know, God knows how to pair things together to the point that it'll be equal, to the point of both men and women will be desirable. When you start trying to date someone based on the fact that what some kind of philosopher, some kind of um, dating scheme person told you, then you're going to find yourself falling into a lot of bad problems. Just get ready to go for your little journey, you know, your little train ride, and you never know where it's going to end up at. So it goes back over in this particular six verse. He said, let's ponder, look, 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 lust is pondered, her lips. Life, her way, and, and a, and the unstable. The life, pa- the path of her life is unstable. You do not know them. They hear. Look here. Therefore, hear me now, my children. Now let's look at this word again, right here in this particular sixth verse. He said, "Lest you ponder her path, you continue to chase that situation. You continue to go after that with the ideals you think, or you lean into your own understanding, or you go after him." Lean into your own understanding what you think that seems to be right in your own eyesight. Where he's got the BMW, he's got the money cute case, he's got the job, he's got successful. Oh, that might be my whole, you landed you a good one. You just ain't picking no apples. Oh, girl, you got you a good one. Oh, man, you got you a good one. No, 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 no. Is it pleasing to God? To the point that God may cause you to be in that particular situation that you're in or that marriage that he has in store for you, that in the outcome of what don't seem right in the eyesight of another individual, that God will bring it to fruition. I've seen great marriages and great families come out of situations that people looked at to the point that they didn't think it was right. It wasn't financially right. It wasn't um uh, she may have been a hard worker woman, I make as much as money. He may have been a hard worker man, and I make as much as money. But they had a heart that's drawn to God, and God blessed them with good children, a good family, good household, not trying to live like, you know, somebody's out there in Beverly Hills, but they had nice things that God put around them, and he provided them with safety and success in their life. When the person who chose the money suit and the BMW or the nice skirt or Chanel, whatever it may be that you wear out there, you know, whatever color, whatever you have on, to make that thing appealing to come to you down the line. You got more destruction, more hell going on in the house than you can never think of before. You invited the very devil into your house or you invited the very demon into your house. And I'm not just saying in the very household, but into your life because you hadn't chosen to ask God what he needs for you to have, but you went out with the desperate situation and found something that quite wasn't right. As a matter of fact, the thing probably didn't last two or three years anyway. You probably just stand together for the fact that maybe finances. You see all this stuff going on now. People now want to test things out. They want to go out and live with one another, see if it be right. Well, that thing will, be, that thing will jack up too. Because why? You went into a situation that you want to try out something that God already put in preserve for you that you should have prayed for before you went into it. But instead, you wanted to move in with it or be with it to a point you think you want to hold for a while and see how it is. And when it don't work out right, you just run off in the other direction. Or she just run off in the other direction. Oh, I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to work. Well, you'll be testing all your life then. Because you didn't want to uh, trust God in the midst of whatever it is that you need to do. The word of God says in the eighth verse, remove your ways from her. Get away from that. Get away from him. Get away from her. That thing may not be right for you. Get away from him. Remove your ways from her. Do not go near the door of her house or his house. Doesn't mean the physical house. Mean don't entertain that thing. Because you're going to find yourself in a situation that you didn't see God first. And you looked at it from a, a, what we call a physical point of view. And you thought it was right, especially with this new, this new kind of dating situation going on. I feel for these young, che- these young kids and people who are not in the situation and want to be in the situation. It's just all jacked up and towed up from the floor up. You know, you got some things is, is, is over here. It's not right. You got some things over here. It's right. What I mean by that, you got man with the man. You got the woman with the woman. And it's, it's crazy. People in desperate situations to fulfill the lust and desires of the body and the physical ailments, whether they're waiting on God to bring the kind of companionship you want them to have to make them more fruitful on the earth than what they should be. You may not like what I'm saying, but you know, suppose we're going to tell you the truth. Now, you can go to some kind of philosopher or something like them dating schemists and all this and give you all these tricks and schemes about how you can date and catch a man, how you can catch a woman. Okay, and if you don't get on your knees and burn them up and ask God 
that you desire to have a wife and you have a good wife and have productive children. Uh, you guys produce children to the point that these children be educated. And you got to speak over their life. Lord, I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that you bring me a good wife. You bring me a good husband. That when we go forth and we be married, Father God, we be joined as one. Not you trying to find some kind of real, but be joined as one. And when God bring you together in holy matrimony, he said, in the situations that you go through, it's through death do you part. Don't get mad because the finances get bad. Don't get mad because you can't get the house you want at that particular time. Don't get mad because this situation is not what you think it's going to be. You know, and people looking at you and making fun of you about, well, this, that, this, that, and the other. And then here you are living a life dream or something that seemed right for people, but you got hell going on in your household. It's all tore up. It's all jacked up. You're fighting about finances. You're fighting about him going out, maybe running around with somebody else because you probably running your mouth too much and he probably running his mouth too much. You can't get alone together, but you stand together for the, fake, for the sake of what you call, if children be in the midst of it, for the children or for your friends. And that's just a jacked up situation all around. And then you go talking to your mother, you go talking to your father about this, that, and the other. And sometimes when you say things to people, what goes on in your marriage, you can't take it back even though y'all heal and make it together. That's why you got to keep your business to yourself and keep your trap shut. And learn how to take things before God and ask and pray about it. Marriage is not easy. It's not something you just run across and to talk to your girlfriend and boyfriends about. My wife is very sacred to me, and I'm very sacred to my wife. She don't run around telling everybody about our marriage. Why? Because it's none of that business. Handle your own stuff. Get your own grip together. When you get your own stuff together, maybe you can be a feel pleasing about what's going on in your own life. Get your own business together. That's why the Word of God talks to sweep money. What the William brother say? Sweep around your own back door. Find something good for yourself. You study. The reason you ain't married, you're running up around. I'm just, can I talk to you? The reason you probably ain't got a husband yet, you're running up around your mom and them and sister and them. You run up around your brother and them for the guys, and they're telling you things that ain't even right, and you don't see God first. You can see some stuff tore up in your day life, but you still want to seek them for wisdom and knowledge and direction. Find somebody who's solid in what they're doing, Christian orientated, and let them pray with you. And maybe in a situation, God will show you and direct you where you can find the very fruit that you need to pick that can last you all your life. And you can be with it and produce better fruit. So you're running across some kind of world philosopher, give him some kind of dating schemes and read some kind of books about this, that and the other. You know, trust God. There's nothing wrong with you reading magazines about this, that, and other, how relationships took place. But you need to learn about your own relationship and how you need to come together. And when God brings you together with something that's good, then you will know that it's good. The Bible says, taste and see if it's good. I bet it won't be sour like some of these other stuff you're getting hold to that people tell you about. Quit letting people pump this garbage in your head and tell you all these stories about how you should have a relationship and the way it should be. And when you can just get down on your knees and pray to God, Lord, I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that you find me a good husband or you find me a good wife, that we come together in holy matrimony and we live the life of success. And I just preach and declare and decree and pray over every one of my children that you give us in this marriage, that they'd be successful. They already have husbands and wives in their life. That in the midst of all the things that they are doing, that God may show them and direct them that this is a very fruitful relationship. This is a very fruitful marriage. I just, I just declared, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I hand it all over to Jesus, who the author and the finisher of my faith. In the midst of whatever I'm going through, God will know the way and the directions what he's called me to go in. Quit looking at the people to get you where you need to go and, turn, and just get on your knees. The Bible said, according to the word Joshua 1 and what Joshua 1 and 8 tells us, Joshua 1 and 8 tells us you got to meditate on the things that you need. But the word of God said, but when you walk upright, He's telling you strictly, but when you walk upright, no good thing will God hold from you. We live in what we call a photogenic world today. People look at photos and pictures and videos and let you believe that they're doing something great. No, that ain't always true. Don't believe that lie. Don't believe that song. It ain't always what it appears to be. I'm telling you, you see things that look good, but it ain't always what it seems to be. Don't fall into that trap. Don't fall into that bamboozle. Because it's not what it is. It ain't always appears what it seems to be. The word of God goes on. I'm going to finish this out. The word of God goes on here in this particular night verse. Let you give your honor to others and your years to the cruel one. This is what he's saying. This is what a person does when they don't follow the directions of the kingdom of God. They get bamboozled into a relationship or they get bamboozled into an event or thing. And it seems to be right. And they went with it because they threw money at them. They pulled them by the ring of their nose. They made them seem to be something that was good. But on down the line, it was just a fake. It was just, it was a sham. It was a scam. And then you find yourself heartbroken and stuck, discombobulated, don't know which way to go, man or woman. 
And then you find yourself you know, all alone, not trusting anybody because you should have trust God first in the process of the situation. So let somebody run through you and you run through them. And you find out what the situation was. You could have landed the right thing in the first place if you trusted God in the midst of the situation. Now, look at this right here. Look at this right here. He said, less a excuse me, less alien be fooled with your wrath and your labor go to the house of a foreigner. Come on, man, woman, God. All your work for not trusting in God can go to something that won't even mean nothing. You put all your effort into this and you chose what you thought was right. This is the word of God tells us. The word that seems right unto a man or a woman, but the end of his death. This is the word of God is telling you right here. You can keep running after stuff. You can hear all these different stories about these folks with marriage. You, know, you can get this old fake marriage. You can get this old, these old things. Ain't nothing wrong with you understanding how to communicate, get with good people. They teach you to help your marriage be strong. If you're a Christian, I seek a Christian counselor. You know, I would definitely seek a Christian counselor. We've got too many wild old counselors out there. Some not married, some married. And I'll tell you, you need to seek somebody who's married and understand have a successful marriage. And let them tell you about some things like me and my wife. How you got to endure challenges and changes in your life. And when you do make a mistake with someone, and it happened to be something that you produced out of that particular relationship and then turn out right. Look here, you're not lo- you haven't lost. It's just a lesson learned. That you know not to go that way again. As in my situation, and many other situations. You know, you'll find yourself drifted apart to the point that you'll find the fruit in your life being alienated because of what somebody may have said. And every time you get in a relationship and you have a, a party of people over here and a party of people over there, it's always going to be separation because people are going to believe what they want to believe. One party going to always tell the particular party what they want them to hear. They'll never hear the right story because they're always hearing stuff. See, even in situations where anybody's in whether you had a, a, a relationship over here, you had a child over here, you had a relationship over here, a child over here, it's always going to be a back and forth situation. That person going to persuade the kids to think one thing, and then this person going to persuade the kids to think one thing. It's just, it's just a bunch, it's just ludicrous. It's just crazy. And this is what we have. You have more separation, more demonic, especially if a person is not saved and don't believe in God. You have more demonic see, more um, what we call devilishness, in those things, because you done poison the mind of one individual, and this individual, you done poison the mind of them. And so who suffers? The children suffer. Whether you understand that, hey, we didn't have a good relationship together, yada, yada, whoop to do. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. We both learned something. We, we, we know. Let's, let's go ahead and make it good for the children. Instead of waxing and pushing dirt on someone else about what they didn't do, what they should be doing, and then you take that stuff and you throw it in the lives of other little kids and people and all the other relation people in your life. And then you find yourself jacking everybody up and before you know everybody else around you and around. Father God, we just bless you. We thank you for this time, this moment. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we just decree and declare that in the midst of the man and woman, God, rise up this morning. Father God, give them the direction through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that every one of their footsteps will be guided as they go out to the very workplace on today. And whatever it is that may be, Father God, in a household, if they're doing this particular area where they're actually working from home, Father God, bless them. Give them the wisdom and knowledge and direction and understanding in the midst of all things. They may clearly know and understand that you're always in control. And I believe, Father God, when you're going when you're Get to that situation, Father God. I know there's no good thing you'll hold from those that's if they walk upright. And I just ask you, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, over in the area of Tel Aviv and all this fighting and shooting and missing and killing up innocent people, Father God, go over there, Father God, and put a cap on that situation, Father God. Shut it down in the name of Jesus. I just declare that each side will come to a peace agreement for all these innocent lives won't be getting killed in Tel Aviv and Israel. Father God, we're planning and we're praying about the very holy land and all this is taking place, Father Father God, we know that you're constantly in control. And I know, Father God, according to your word, your will, your purpose, you said in your word, Father God, you will continue to trust and believe in the midst of all things, Father God, that you may know and understand in the midst of these situations that's going on over there, Father God, it's always according to what you want it to be. That means you're always the conqueror in the situation. And I just ask you, Father God, to touch them. Let their word be revealed clearly through the skies and the very things that's going on over there, Father God, that they may know and understand they're going against a very own that you've, you've forbidden. That's to kill one another, whether it be one side of different culture or one other side of different culture. Lord, we all belong to you. 
take out this nationality thing that's going on around the world, that people continue to be separated with these words of thoughts and understanding about what's happening in the world. I know there's some negative things going on with one race than the other race, but in the midst of all these things that's going on, Father God, bring peace in the midst of us as being people. Open up their mind and let them see clearly about the work and what you called them to do and be in your precious and powerful and mighty name. I pray, Lord, amen.